Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for March 22nd of 2024. Uh, good to see everybody here this morning. And as usual, if you'd like to drop your questions on the questions tab and the chat tab is for uh, general conversation. And we have great people who are here to help clarify answers to questions. Um, hey, John, Minnesota greetings. So anyway, we are here on a uh, third day in the spring. It's nice and snowy here. Hey, Renard. Um, gosh, guess I don't know where to start. We'll start by going into the heart space this morning, as we always do. So we'll do what we call the Trinity breath of moving our consciousness from the head back into the heart, grounding and connecting. So here we go. Take our three breaths. So imagine within your heart is your light, your soul's fire, imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that love, that light, that supporting energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart and just letting her envelop you, fully grounding. The next breath, we connect with you as creator God, as soul, breathing in that light of you into the heart. Just allowing in your light. The third breath, we breathe in the energy of earth, the energy of creation. We bring them both through us. So we are the conduit, the bridge between heaven and earth as we take that breath and that moves us into the heart space. Hey, Valerie from Colorado. Good to see you here this morning. So we will get started here today. We'll do some announcements and we'll jump over here for questions. Um, let's see four announcements. We, um, if you're on our email list, we sent out an email in regards to a Clinton, Iowa event, which we changed the date on. We're now going to do that event on Eclipse on the 8th. Uh, we'll be in Clinton, Iowa. We'll have over 97% um, Eclipse. Won't be the full 100, but it's still going to be beautiful, marvelous. Let's see. So... Uh, just to let you know, if you are in the Chicago area, we're going to be doing a two-hour workshop downtown Chicago. That will be on the 4th. On the 5th, we will be in um, Serpent Mound. So Serpent Mound, they're doing a Star Knowledge um, Eclipse event there. An uh, Eclipse Peace Summit is what they're calling the Star Knowledge Conference. And again, that will be there in Serpent Mound. So we'll be there for the weekend, set up. I'll be doing a workshop on Sunday. Going to leave Sunday afternoon and head back to Clinton, Iowa, where we'll be doing a full day workshop in Clinton. Um, it's going to be a pretty phenomenal workshop. So we're going to touch on a lot of the things that um, we've never we've never shared publicly. So if you happen to be in that region, that will be a really good workshop to be at. Hey, Samson, good to see you here from Clear Down in Porto Morales. Good to be good that you're here today. Um, let's see. So, some other announcements. We are we have a few things in the works that we're going to be coming out with um, here in the next few weeks. A lot of good new products um we're going to create grounding rings for the shoes once again we have created flat and tensor rings for shoes before but we never had the grounding energy so now that we can create this grounding ring that basically grounds your heart to the heart of the earth it's a bioelectric and spiritual connection um, it is something that you'll be able to wear in shoes so look for those here in a few weeks also coming out um and I won't be doing 50 Questions Friday for a few weeks because I'll be on the road. Um, 
we will be in, gosh, let's see. We'll be in the San Francisco Bay Area, San Rafael, here in April as well. Um, and all these events you can find at Twisted Sage upcoming events. But um, so we probably won't be doing another 50 Questions Friday for a little bit, nor uh, Wisdom Circle Wednesdays. The Wisdom Circle Wednesdays, um, there's been kind of a misunderstanding with that. It's not that we all get together and share experiences. It's that this Wisdom Circle is all about the space, the space that we stand in together. It is a sacred space that is made for you to step in to where you can more fully embody yourself. And within that space, there are many people who have been doing the work of the integrating of lifetimes, of bringing those lifetimes to wisdom. And when you stand within that circle, it's kind of like how I see my sister doing healing. Uh, my sister, Brenda, when she does healing, she just fully embodies herself in the present, allowing in her light fully. When she does that and she invites in her client, her client fully embodies their selves, perhaps for the first time ever. And when they do that, their light is what does all of the clearing, rebalancing, a.k.a. healing work. So this wisdom circle is something that you can go back and watch the two videos that we've done and just be present in there. And it's a space of miraculous shifts, if you will allow it, just by simply being in that space with all of those that are holding that space for you. So anyway, that's really what Wisdom Circle Wednesdays is about. You can go back through and watch the two videos that we do have and just simply be in that space. All right, so let's see. Some announcements for one of the new products. We're going to have a, <clears throat> a garden helper's kit. Now, this is going to include, of course, the Hedica Garden Helper Steaks that we have, the size small and large. It's going to include one of our newer plant rings, which is simply the bangles. It is going to be our least expensive ring, um, and it has a much mm, greater field than what the wisdom rings that we were using last year for electroculture and for plants. Um, these bangles are holding a a much greater energetic to bring in the consciousness of that plant, work with the consciousness of you. And um, again, that's where we see the magic at is working with consciousness. So we'll also have a seven inch tensor field generator. That is the one that we use for commercial agriculture. It has a largest sphere of influence of 12 miles. Um, let's see what else is in this um, kit that you can pick and choose from. And we'll have it set up so that you can do bundles and save um, or purchase the whole kit. We'll also have Hedicas, regular Hedicas available in that store, as well as our new water ring. So we do have the home set of water rings on the website, and they are actually on clearance. That is this size of very well used water rings. Uh, they come in a set of three. You can also buy them in singles. But these are over 20% off right now as we are clearing these out. So the new water ring that's going to be offered in uh, this gardener's kit and our water rings in general, after these ones are all cleared out, we will have a lighter gauge ring that is the same size, the same diameter, but it is one gauge lighter and it is about $12 cheaper. So that will be our new water rings, which are also going to be available in this gardener's kit. Um, and of course, we're going to bring back the rainmakers. So that's something that um, you'll be able to soon order ahead of time. We will have those available um, to simply order, but they won't be available here for another week or two. All right, so thank you guys again for being here, and let's jump into some questions. Uh, let's see, here's a question. I've been wearing the Creation Field wand daily with the new Infinite Heart and a Moldavite pendant. Simply amazing. How can I use this tool to attract business and grow? Would you suggest the wand or generator more for setting that type of intention? 
um, you know, I would use the wand and to simply jump in and do the work. So, you know, when you're looking at abundance and flow, the concept that I would take with it is that you are infinitely abundant, that we simply have blocks to receive. And so to create your abundance, it's not about fighting your abundance or lack of. It is truly about hmm, welcoming it in. And when you use that creation field wand, you're in the heart space and you just send that energy out. And it's just with your intention of clearing all blockages of flow so that you can allow your innate abundance to be there. Now, thank you for also asking this question, Renard, because this is something that um, we've really noticed working with these creation fields. <clears throat> is that, you know, because I wear the creation field coil pendant, and usually I, I usually I had the creation field wand too. I wear that one a lot. But this creation field, it is truly the energetics is where if you can be in the heart space, grounded, aligned, and present. I tell you what, presence is the key to everything in creation. Self-love knocks us off of our presence because in order to stay in the moment where creation happens, you can't get pulled into the past or worries about the future. And a lot of those things that come up that we've noticed that prevent us from fully stepping into our presence is that radical acceptance of everything that we are. The radical acceptance of, of all parts and pieces of us. Even those parts that mm, claim to not have abundance. It is those parts that we simply open up to and say, hey, come here. You know, anytime we work with any of these parts, pieces, aspects of us, we don't go to them. We stand in our light and power. We open our arms and say, come here. And so doing this with those parts and pieces of you through lifetimes and for the ancestors, you know, because there have been a lot of oaths, vows, promises of, of um, everything from celibacy to uh, abundance to all of this. And so also when we go through, that is part of what we're releasing is the, the well, I guess you could use the word karmic, but the ancestral stuff. Um, so as you are in that space of allowing, you're just sending out your light to all of that to the ancestrals, everything. Okay, but going back to the story, this creation field, this creation field truly, when you can stand grounded, centered, connected, aligned, and you are in this creation field, the creation field wander the coils, you simply just be. You do not have to make choices, decisions, seek, or any of that. When you can be truly present and in these fields, you just stand there allowing and everything comes to you in the moment of creation. Now, I tell you, this is really a wild new paradigm. And I know some of you can attest to this, that if you can just stand grounded, centered, balanced, aligned, and present, you just allow everything to come to you. It is quite the paradigm shift and one that is very much real. So yes, um, for abundance, creation, I would most certainly use that um, creation field one or the creation field coil. And you can also use the, um, you know, the highest potentials ring with that grounding ring. That's really a great combo. That's one that, um, gosh, I highly suggest that combination. It's a 15 inch highest potentials ring and a 12 inch grounding ring. They're ones that you can use under your chairs, um, under your seat while you're driving. Um, you know, I've loaned these out to, to other vendors at events to put underneath their chairs, to put underneath their crystal tables, 
things like that. So I always carry extra rings to loan out during the events. And I tell you, um, the practitioners at these events are the ones that are really, truly blown away by these tools. Um, you know, even that grounding ring has been shown to clear a lot of discomforts from the body, physical, mental, emotional. Um, so the grounding ring really is a fantastic one, especially in set can set with that highest potentials ring. All right. So we did not have any questions this time from the internet. So if you guys do have any more questions here, please do drop them on the questions tab. Um, simple, easy questions is absolutely perfect. Um, we just want to help people get the most out of their tools and for those who are looking into the tools to be able to find their appropriate one for them and their uses. So let's see. Um, any other updates? <clears throat> of course, we did do a lot of energetic updates on February 1st. So all of your Divine I Am and Silver Taurus pendants have been updated. So if you have an old Divine I Am pendant, that was the one, that $555 pendant that just gets in, it does the work. I mean, for me, when I first put it on, it was just clearing lifetimes. Um, that one came to be a little harsh. So when we did the energetic update, that one will still go through and do the work but you can still use it as a daily wearing device, a daily wearing tool, because it's still going to hold that field of peace for you. We also updated the golden fire tools. So this is it is that we started to get some feedback from people that the golden fire just was a little harsh to them, especially those who are really sensitive. Um, the golden fire again was really loaded energetically with a lot of mm, agenda for the clearing, the release, you know, that's in the time the golden fire was made is when we were doing all of that big work with all of the perceived darkness outside of yourself. Well, we've updated the golden fire to be more conducive to allowing in this new light of you, just like our newer tools. So now then the golden fire rings to me are, I can actually be in their field they feel good. They're not trying to push. They are simply being a very peaceful and passive ring, which still does all of that same work, but it does it with mm, a lot more grace and ease because it's bringing your light through. So there are several of the new tools that um, we have really updated and harmonized those energies to be a lot more peaceful. Um, to the user. So anyway, um, let's see anything else. Um, gosh, yeah, I don't know for me, I'm just still in a huge mode of integration. Of course, I've been on the road a lot. Um, I've had time to really settle in, but, um, yeah, not doing a lot of energy work right now. I am just being very still and um going through a lot of integration so curious where everybody else in the world is at in their process because these are all individual processes it's not like there's a grand thing that makes us all go through the same things at once um but there is um there's a lot moving and happening right now so um Let's see a question here. I have a boxer dog who has high anxiety and drive. He's five and a half years old and his energy is still crazy. I just bought the infinity and put it on his collar. Do you have any other suggestions to help him? So when my sister works with animals, um, well, she works with animals a lot. Dogs especially are an extension of your consciousness. And they like to take on crap for you. So when my sister comes to usually a dog who has issues, it's almost always because it is carrying these issues for its owner. Um, so that really is a good question then. 
how do you best work with your animal? Now, the infinity is going to help a lot because the infinity, when you put the infinity on the collar, it grounds their heart to the heart of the earth. It helps more of the hyperactive dogs kind of calm down. Um, so try that infinity for a little while, but then also realize that everything is energy and that whatever your critter holds is most likely your energy. And to clear energy, there are so many ways you can clear energy. One great way is to simply go into the heart space, doing that Trinity breath that we did. When we did, imagine your animal right there. And just imagine that there's all this dense energy that they're kind of like sponging off of your field. Now, there are many ways that you can clear this energy. It's all intention being in the heart space. You can do something simply by being in the heart and imagining taking in a deep breath and blowing out your light, just blowing light with your breath. And you blow it over your dog, over its field. And your base intention here is just simply clearing the energy from it. Again, it is your energy. Um, so you can make that clear conscious choice that you're releasing it. So right now your dog is carrying it for you. When you take a breath, recognizing that your dog is carrying this energy and you're just like, okay, my intention is for this to be released from our field. Then just release it. So simplicity is the key when you're working in the heart space. You can use those visualizations like blowing with your breath because it's kind of like ceremony for the mind. It allows your mind to be like, okay, there's, I'm going to do something here. It gives you an active role, the mind, an active role to play in the releasing of these energies. But the simpler, the better. Simplicity comes from the heart. When you start getting complicated with it, trying to figure it out, Again, that's all in the mind. All you need to know is that it is energy and that it can be released, transformed. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps out with your doggy. Um, and again, that infinity might just do the entire trick. But keep an eye out for your critters because if you're having a hard time, they're most likely having a hard time too. Um and you can start conversations with them as well. I mean, you can say, hey, this is my stuff. You don't need to carry it. I love you. Thank you. But please let it go. Um, so you can start the conversations with your critters as well. Um, let's see. All right. So yeah, it is definitely a year of self-love, abundance, of receiving, of receiving. Oh my goodness. It is a great year to receive your light, to receive your abundance, to receive your realization that um, everything is energy and it is truly here to serve you. <clears throat> and yeah, great year of realizations. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else unless anybody has any other questions here. Um, so we will be back again. Um, not sure exactly when. Uh, we should be back here in April before, um, before I'm gone all of April. So just look for an email and... Um, we'll be back around and otherwise, oh, let's see. Yeah. I got a couple more questions. Uh, trying to ask for EMF protection around our home. Got the fire generator. Is that enough for my home? Yeah. So the golden fire generators are the, the one that is fast at simply EMF mitigation. Uh, the golden fire energies will even harmonize the 5G millimeter wave. And they have a large sphere of influence of about five and three quarter miles. So these fields go out, 
pardon me, these fields go out about two and a half to two and three quarters miles out in every direction. And so just having that tensor field generator, that golden fire generator in the home is going to be clearing everything free floating through the air. Um, the only thing that the golden fire generator doesn't really get into like um, your electrical panel, if your electrical panel if you are sleeping within that six feet of your electrical panel, then I would suggest putting that golden fire generator near your electrical panel so it will connect in with the electrical system of the house. Um, that would be the only limitation with the generator in as far as its placement um, is if you are dealing with the energy from your electrical panel. But if you are don't spend any time within that five and a half to six feet of your electrical panel, or your, um, or, or your, um, sorry, your meter, your electrical meter, then you are absolutely fine to have the generator placed anywhere in the home. Let's see, if I had to pick one tool to wear while working, what do you recommend? I work in a busy store and there's lots of activity that is distracting. The quantum heart coil pendant. The quantum heart coil pendant is absolutely the best mm, coil pendant to wear. Now, this one is the creation field coil. It's a bit larger. You can still use the creation field coil if that's the one you're drawn to. But I would suggest the quantum heart coil pendant because, again, it is putting that fibrous cocoon around you. For empaths, you receive the information, but not the crap. It keeps you grounded, connected, aligned, and in the heart. So the empath filter really is a good one when you're dealing with the public. Now, if you really want to get crazy with it, you can wear the halo. So like when I go to events, shows, I wear a halo. Because especially in those larger events, it's... Mm, there's a lot of mental stuff pushing and information agendas, all kinds of things. There's just, it's like walking into, you know, swamp was the word, but maybe that's a little harsh, but it's walking into, you know, that just that sea of stuff. And when I wear the halo, especially it, it keeps me very centered, grounded, aligned, balanced. But we can't always wear a halo at work because some people don't appreciate the fashion statement. Um, so then that's where I would go with that quantum heart coil pendant. Hey, Samson, grounding rings for the shoes. Not sure much about the grounding rings for the shoes yet. We still have not actually put them into any kind of um, research and development production yet. So um, here next week, I'm hoping that we'll start to try out some of these rings. Um, so we're going to work on them to make ensure that we have the proper size, shape, um, gauge, flatness for those rings before we do let them out. Uh, let's see, is there a new energy coming in or is it simply the integration space through the infinity that presents itself to me as acceptance and awareness? So, you know, that's it is, you know, that's been kind of coming up to me here recently too about, you know, new energies and these energy shifts and, you know, people talk about, hey, there's this shift in this opening and it's, you know, for all of us. I, you know, as I mentioned here just earlier, just a few minutes ago, that I really feel like <clears throat> we're very much on an individual path. That yes, when we were first stepping onto our path, there's certain alignments, certain, you know, energy spaces that were very um, beneficial for us to truly step more into ourselves. But I truly think that as you start to really narrow in, as you truly step into your path there, that those things don't matter anymore, that you transcend those, those concepts. Kind of like the whole concept of astrology and how it influences us. I truly believe that we can transcend that. Um, there's a lot of things that we are transcending. And so that's what I feel about, you know, 
these different energies and different openings anymore is, is that if you are on your path, that they don't necessarily affect you as much as when you were starting your path. Um, that's only my belief and perception currently. So, but thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the question though, Samson, for sure. You know, because we just each got to trust our, our own ways for sure. Um, question, how does intention work when wanding? I don't go into the heart. Almost anything I think manifests to some degree. If I am not in the heart, can this be bad? No, not at all. Now, when you are wanding and, you know, it's, gosh, there's a lot of times where you just, it's tough to get into that space, into the heart. When you're in your pain body, it's tough to stop and take the breath and move into the heart space. Um, you know, when you are running energy with the wand, you are still bringing your light. Now, the thing about being in the heart is, is that when we're in the heart space, we are more of an open vessel. When we are in our head, we are looking for certain outcomes. We limit those outcomes by projecting from the mind. When you're in the head and you're like, oh, this damn shoulder, I need to fix it. Versus being in the heart and you're like, hey, there's something going on over here. I'm going to run my energy to it and accept and receive the highest outcome for me. Because that's it is that being in the heart brings us a different hmm, basis to start from instead of a box, a perception of, hey, this is bad. I got to fix and heal this or I got to create this. We can still create and things are still going to be just as we always have created from the mind. But when we create from the mind, we put limits on what those potentials can come, what potentials of outcome can be. And so when we're in a heart and it, it makes us less um, rigid on what we choose the outcome to be, we're just in the heart space, then that opens the field to many other potentials and possibilities. This is something that we've been, you know, throughout our whole journey, this has been our understanding is that when you're in the heart space and you don't put limits on what you're doing, that it opens up the potentials greatly for what can occur. Um, but yet still we've always been creating not from the heart and we've created some pretty wonderful things and you can still create that way. Um, the tools also hold a space for you to more easily drop into the heart space. So the dropping into the heart doesn't have to be a big ceremony, stopping and taking breaths. You can move into the heart space with a simple intention and a breath. There you go. And then when you move into the heart space and you're using the wand, it opens the potentials for you. It opens up the outcomes. All right. And thank you very much for that question. Um, because, yeah, there's absolutely no wrong way to use these tools. And you can never use them for bad or ill intent or harm. But you can greatly amplify what these tools do and the outcomes. And again, it all starts in the heart space um, because it is your light, your consciousness, your awareness with these tools that really helps to bring the magic, especially with the wisdom wands, because the wisdom wands, truly the most potent part of these is your light, your soul, because it is not this or me that can do healing for you. It is your light. And to truly allow in your light, it's being comes from the heart. That 
infinite pool of creation. Um, Sam said, how does the Rainmaker present itself to you? I've been broadcasting miracles. <laughs> you know, Samson, I do not have a Rainmaker left in my possession. Actually, I do have one, but it's permanently placed. Um, so I need to make some more Rainmakers because I do realize they are wonderful, wonderful broadcasting stations. So... Um, the new rainmakers that we're going to make, we're going to update. We're, we're updating those tensor coils to where they are bringing in both the grounding energy and the highest potentials field. And then the three rings in the center again are going to be that creation field. So this new, um, this new rainmaker is going to be in a different energetic which I imagine you've already switched your energetics on your Rainmaker Samson to, to be the highest potential. Um, so I'm very glad that you're using it and that you've been able to broadcast miracles because that is it, is um, sharing these fields, embodying them, sharing them. <clears throat> it's a pretty amazing thing. Yeah, I still haven't quite gotten my voice back from being on the road doing three weekends of events. <laughs> so, um, hey, thank you everybody for being here today and for asking the questions. And again, if you do have any questions that um, come up, please do send them to info at Twisted Sage and just put 50 Questions Friday in the header. And then next time we do have a 50 questions Friday, we'll be able to bring that question up. So I appreciate all your time here today. And yeah, we will see you uh, sometime soon in the future. And hopefully I see a couple of you at our upcoming events. All right. Take care, everybody. Till next time.